It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So with this video, we're going to take a close look at the Sega Mega Drive 2 edition. Yep, and it's new, or that's what the box says, in combination with some SD functionality. I picked this one up from AliExpress and with AliExpress, are you going to search for some Sega clones that have HDMI functionality or none? But I said it's like a jungle out there, so I picked a couple of them up and want to review them here on the channel. The box itself looks quite nice and not like the condition because it's bus stop due of transport, but we're looking at the copy of it because they are ripping off everything nowadays and that also includes for the freaking package. I must say that some of these boxes have like a basic box, but this one looks quite nice. Here we're going to see like we're having the Mega Drive edition software library. Oh yeah, they are making an error <laughs> again like always. And then we're going to get a couple of games. And I'm questioning is like are these things built in or just that they're just going to give you like a naughty multi-game card. Yeah, let's find out. Let's do a quick unboxing. Alright, so the box itself feels quite flimsy. So it is not the cardboard, like the high quality one. You can see it's very bust stop. A little bit of a bummer if you're like a collector of these boxes, you will not be very happy. Okay, so let's see. Ah, it comes with a multi-game card. Ah, oh, the weird ones, like the re weird looking ones. These things are cheap, smelly plastic. Two controllers. Oh man, they, re they weigh quite heavy. So let's do a quick overview of the controller. The sick button with no mode button, but we're doing a quick overview of that too and later on and nope this one doesn't have hdmi this is just a basic clone with a very cheap cable over here we're going to get the power supply they give me the european version all right ah so this is the toilet paper yeah when it's yeah it's not even a metal it's more like a toy yeah it's actually like a piece of toilet paper download file back game connect with sd card nevertheless a quick explanation how it works and here we're having the system itself and holy crap this thing weighs almost nothing let's do a quick overview of that <laughs> and uh, let's take a close look at it but first let's smell it <laughs> yep it's smelly chemical again <coughs> all right so let's take a close look at the controllers they're having the floating d-pad it feels kind of flimsy oh boy or you can even hear it really horrible I'm pressing one button the other one don't move so they are not like connected with each other yeah, i did see that before and that is really bad so it's not like the cheaper the cheap cheap versions it's like start but they still feel very cheap the sega logo you can see like it's all messed up slow turbo mode basically what like do you know these these old school turbo buttons is like a freaking mini mini miniature gnome is inside your control and pressing all the way start like <laughs> turbo mode <laughs> Slow. Mm, pressing the start. And the cable itself. Oh boy. I just wanted to give you a quick look at that because this looks really flimsy and cheap. There are only a couple of pins in it. I can remember like the original cable has way more pins. If they are using it, that is something of another question. But we're only going to get one for video, one for audio. So it's going to be mono sound all the freaking way. And I freaking hate that. So let's take a close look at the system itself. At the front we're going to get the two controller ports and I will be not be surprised that we can still use the original controllers. So over here we're going to get the on and off switch and look at this. You can see it moving all the way. It looks and feels really cheap. This is like a clickish button for the, for the reset. Look at this. <laughs> it's really bad. Still naughty using the Sega logo. This is not an official product so far I know. And of course the cover itself. And the dust cover it looks really flimsy. I would not be surprised if you use it for a couple of months and it will basically break the connector itself. Let's like let's even tear it down later on this video and let's look at it. So at the bottom we're going to get Sega Mega Drive 2. Nah, you can't say that this is an official licensed product. No, no, no. This does like the ultimate naughty thing they're doing over there. It does has 10 volts. What kind of power supply did I get? 9 volts or what? Yep, 9 volts. Over here at the back we're going to get the input, you can see it still has the original connector and then we're having the input for the power adapter. I just wanted to give you like an idea how how heavy or light this thing is. 200 freaking idiot, oh 278 grams to give you more like an idea how much this is because it's almost nothing, <laughs> light as a feather. 
Okay, so let's try some games on the system. Let's see what it is capable of. So, but first, okay, this is an original cartridge. Oh, I must say that works very well. Normally, like these things get stuck. Okay, let's grab myself an, let's say, an EverDrive. Just see how this fits in. No, okay, that works very well. Okay, so let's try them out. Let's try out the game itself and let's see if there are like built in games because they're giving us like a multi game card with the system. But the most interesting feature of this device is, of course, the built in EverDrive or SD functionality. So when you're looking at the side here at the right, we can see that we're having the slot for the SD card. It comes with a 4 GB, so that is gigantic. If you know that most of these files like a couple of MBs, so you can. <laughs> Put a full Sega library on this if you want to go the full naughty way. But I want to bring the testing for these systems just to the next wicked level. I tested it out in the past with some cartridges, but I wanted to test them out with all kinds of versions. And I think I've collected them all now. So with the test, we will include Street of Rage number two, because I love those soundtracks and they're great test for testing out the sound capabilities of the hardware. Then we're going to get the Bitmap Bureau Xeno Crisis. It's basically like a new game-ish homebrew. Then we're going to get Virtual Racing with the special chip. The chip that not all of the clone system will ha have the support for or the system in general. We're going to get Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the combination card that is also not supported by every single clone system. And not to forget an original multi-game card just to see what happens if we're going to plug it in and we're trying to play some games. We're going to get the Mega EverDrive, the original Griggs edition, and that we're going to test out because also the EverDrive is not supported by every single system. And then we're going to get the multi-game card from our friends from China. Same story, not always compatible with a system. Also, we're going to test out the fake weird looking Japanese version multi-game card. Then the Sonic 2, the when he becomes fluffy, or in other words, just a retro game, a homebrew game, just to see how it works out. And of course, we're going to check out the fake versions, the EverDrives from China, just to see if this game works out too. Okay, so let the testing begin on the device and let's see if it's capable of running all of these different cartridges. Let's take a close look at the menu itself I'm booting up without a game. We're going to get Street Fighter ADP or people and Street Fighter number three. Kind of weird. A homebrew game. Sonic 2, Double Dragon 2. A weird collection if you ask me. But the most interesting thing is of course the SD card. When you go into the SD card, this is what you're going to get. Same like the Ed game system, the Fire Core. Here you can see it loads up the game list. And that's it. We're going to add ourselves some games. And if you want to boot it up, the only thing you need to do is press the button. It loads up like a basic cheap EverDrive from China and you can play your game the naughty way. Okay guys, so the first game, let's try a retro game just to see how it works. Where the freaking hell is my sound of the rings? It's completely gone. Wow. But yeah, I just wanted to test out if it works with the retro games and it does. All right, next up, Xeno Crisis. And I love the soundtrack of this game, but it sounds so awful with this system. Okay. Oh, this D-pad of the controller is so bad. All right, next up. Oh, oh the sound is really bad. Let's try out the game of the official multi-card. And it supports, let's say, official multi-card games. All right. All right, so let's try a multi-game card and different version. Let's try a game just to see if it boots up. And it boots up. All right, so let's try a combination card and you can see that it doesn't work. And this is just something that is very common with these very horrible knockoff systems oh boy this is really bad then let's try the weird multi-game card i had laying around okay so this is the first version and let's try the one that came with the system okay so these multi-game cards seem to be working fine like these are the horrible versions that we have seen in the past pure byte presents 3d tetris tom 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 
But the same with virtual racing. If you want to try out some, let's say, special games like with multi cards or let's say with a special chip, they will not work. Nope. Okay, next up, let's do the sound test with Street of Rage number two. Oh, for the people familiar to the Sega Blast Processing Power from the 90s, you can already hear that this sounds really rubbish. But still, I wanted to show you how it sounds. This monitor forces into the 6x9 aspect ratio, so a little bit of a bummer if you ask me, but the signal output itself is not that bad. I have seen myself some shitty, let's say, signal output with a lot of distortion, but this thing doesn't look that bad at all. But sad that it's only running on the pulse speed and not to forget that it is just sounding like shit. Alright guys, so let's take a close look in the inside. It doesn't wait a lot, so there will almost be nothing in it. Most of these clone systems nowadays, with the technology, we can have this tiny piece of B inside that can do it all. But sadly, they still can't manage to get it right when it comes to the sound. And most of the time, we're just going to get these awful, really awful sound outputs. This version has AV out only, but I must say that the image this thing puts out is not super bad. And again, Depends how you look at it, of course. So here we're going to get the wiggle reset button. It's stuck in the shell itself. Oh boy, this is not good. Like these springs can be, uh, let's put it this way. I have seen of these springs coming loose very easily after using it only for a couple of times. Yeah, so that is just not a good thing. So let's take a close look at the inside over here. So that's it. That's the only thing that we're going to get. The PCB at the front, and oh man, it's really filthy. Look at this, it's all like a very filthy piece of hardware. Ugh. But okay, the overview, the SD slot goes into here with this old school ribbon cable. The, this is the, basically the main board in combination with the cartridge slot. Here we're going to get the PCB for the signal output and the input for the power supply. And here at the front, we're going to get, oh, I can't even get it off. Yeah, I can't get it off. And here we're going to get the PCB that is R for the controller ports, the reset, and of course the on and off switch. The button itself, this piece of plastic, is attached on the top over here. And that will serve for the on and off switch so we can use it outside of the shell. Even they are selling it like the new system. Here you can see like this product has been made in 2014. So holy crap, this thing is really old now when I'm making this video. There is no date on the PCB over here, but everything looks really filthy. And it's just a really filthy machine, if you ask me. A really horrible, low quality product. And it's more like a plastic fantastic. Okay guys, so when I'm looking at this Mega Drive 2 from AliExpress, or better said China, I need to cry so hard in the inside because this is so bad. Like the feature of the SD function works fine, it's really cool. But when it comes to the gameplay, the sound, it's just horrible. Like the controllers are bad, like I need to press the D-pad quite very hard because it doesn't respond at all. I played some finding games, but it is just making the games unplayable. Yeah, it's a really cheap piece of plastic. So if you want to have some real Sega play fun, just get yourself a real Sega from the 90s so with some blast processing power and not this cheap stuff from china because this is not the experience that you want to have i want to thank you for watching consider subscribing hit that bell become one of the wicked family and i will see you in the next video